Good morning, everybody. All right, got a couple of announcements for you. We got a lot of stuff um, actually to announce, which we haven't had a lot of stuff in recent weeks, so it's good. We have announcements to make. Hopefully, some people will be uh, watching uh, the the recording so that we can you know, make sure these announcements get to everybody. But we'll post them and stuff as well. Um, next week, um, this is you know obviously for everyone in the room, but the men are you know typically uh, enjoy this uh, person quite a bit more than. Uh, the ladies. I don't know why that is. You can ask him when he gets here next week. George Moxley's coming next week, um, and he is a great speaker. He's he's hilarious, but he's an amazing man of God. He's got a great story. Um, so he's going to be here next week. Also next week, um, at about 4 o'clock or so, we're going to come up, meet up here, uh, and go ahead and get the church decorated for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, if uh, you guys can join us tomorrow, uh, ne- not not tomorrow, next Sunday around 4 o'clock or so, like I said, we'll come up here. Um, we're not going to go like super crazy, but we are going to, yeah, make it, yeah, we're going to celebrate the season. So uh, get ready uh, for that as well. The following week we'll have um, Pastor Austin DeLoach back in here. Um, if you guys saw him a couple weeks ago, he'll be back. And then the week after that, December 12th, um, we're going to have a special guest in the building, and we'll have a special person in the building as well. Um, we're going to have a lady named Abigail Fields. Um, she is a certified grief counselor. Um, it has an amazing story. Um, she's going to come in and speak to us that morning. But with her that morning will also be our very own Pastor Jennifer. So she'll be back in the house uh, on the 12th uh, ministering to us. And then that night... Um, at 6 o'clock, we're going to come back. Abigail and her husband are going to uh, minister to, um, to whoever wants to come that night. So it will be from about 6 o'clock to 7.30 or 8, we'll, I don't, you know, however long it lasts. But um, it's, it's really going to be you know, a, an amazing, impactful. Uh, I mean, I think every one of us is dealing with something right now. I mean, we've all just been going through so much over and over and over again. So this is going to be a great opportunity for us to kind of start digging into a little bit, a little bit of that and hopefully uh, relieving some of the burden that we have on us uh, going into the holiday season. So, um, so yeah, um, that's, that's, that's kind of it. So we'll post all that stuff as well. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, check the Facebook page. We'll send it out through uh, the, the app as well. So if you don't have the app, make sure you download the app um, so that you can get those notifications there as well. Because some of us don't use Facebook or some of us have it and we just don't look at it or whatever. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Bow your heads for me today, guys. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity to, to share your word, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless this service, to bless this time we have together, Lord, that uh, this would be a time of increase, that this would be a time that we get to, um, to fill ourselves up and that those that, that, that aren't in the building, that they would... Uh, that they would either watch online and, 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 and receive word from you, Lord, or that they would see online and then feel convicted to get in here next week, God. We ask that you um, be with us uh, throughout the rest of the service, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I've already kind of alluded to it a little bit. Um, does anybody realize that next week is Thanksgiving? Wow. Has anybody, like, I literally went out, um, like, last week, and I bought a couple of turkeys, and because I thought I was like getting like really early, like I was like, I'm going to go ahead and get them now. And then that way I'll just keep them in the freezer. And then and then we'll we'll have them for, you know, when Thanksgiving finally gets here. And I thought I was like being really good and early. But in reality, I was, it's like it dawned on me all of a sudden. I'm not buying them early. I'm buying them on time. So because I mean, it's like Thanksgiving just like showed up out of nowhere. Um, you know, and then, you know, again, I've also kind of alluded to it already. But does anybody realize we only have four more Sundays until Christmas? Yeah, four Sundays till Christmas. Has anybody in here um, put their tree up yet? Anybody decorated their house yet? Um, anybody actually put lights on their house on the outside? Not yet, not yet. No. Anybody like bought presents yet? Anybody bought? Anybody wrapped those presents yet? So I've got to actually brag on my wife for a minute um, because um, you know obviously life's been crazy for for all of us. But I'm gonna, i got to brag on her for a second because, number one, our house is decorated for Christmas on the inside, not the outside, because that's my part. Um, the tree is up. Um, most of the presents are bought for our kids and wrapped and under the tree. Um, 
Everything she needs for Thanksgiving to prepare for Thanksgiving meals is already purchased. All the stuff she needs for candy for Christmas is already purchased. I mean, literally, she's like on fire right now. And which, you know, given the kind of the chaos and everything going on in our lives, um, it's, it's, it's really kind of amazing that she's been able to kind of stay focused on her family and what's important to her. So, um, and, and for all of you other moms out there that are, that are fighting through that and, and getting there, you know, congratulations to y'all because, you know, we kind of, the, the men just kind of get to show up and, and, and take credit for things. You know, we'll like, I'll, I'll, I'll cook the turkey on Thanksgiving and be like, I did Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> right? So, uh, but no, um, before I even started praying about this message or researching this message or even thinking about writing this message, um, you know, I hadn't really thought about, you know, all that she had done up to this point. But then as I got to writing it, it kind of was like, wow, this really literally falls right in line with what I wanted to speak about today. Um, I want to talk to you today about time. Um, and finding the time to do all the things that we need to do um, as we go through the season, the seasons of our lives. Um, you know, we've got the holiday season coming up. You know, we're, we're, we're in, it's fall. It's, you know, quickly uh, becoming Christmas, um, you know, shortly after. So um, I kind of want to talk to you about time because time's pretty important to us, right? I mean, if you think about time, you think about back when you were in kindergarten and your teacher gave you that little paper plate and you drew the numbers on it. And then you got that little brass tack thing that you would stick through there and, and tack the little hand. Yeah. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and then the teacher would like call out a time and everybody would have to move their time on there and everybody would hold it up and then there'd be like the one kid that's like wrong and everybody would laugh at him and, and we'd make, you know, hopefully you weren't that kid. Um, <laughs> But, you know, then there's always the smart kid that, like, gets it up before everybody else, and we all want to throw stuff at him. So, um, but, we, you know, we, we did this, though, because learning about time was important. Um, how, how many, okay, so anybody here from Jacksonville, like, lived here a, a long time? A couple of us have. Anybody remember this number? 358 It's the number for time. Like, literally, like, for you young people, y'all may not know this, um, there was a number... Like if your if your power went out or if your watch died, there was a number you could call to get the time, and like literally, like it was used on a regular basis. Like we had to call to find out what what time is it. Hold on, let me pick up the phone in the kitchen that's attached to the cord and dial three five eight one two one two. The first federal time is, um, yeah, whatever it is. And, you know, we literally had to call and get time. And I actually called that number. It actually still works. It, it, it literally still works, um, and except there's advertising now. Like, you have to sit there and listen to an advertisement from, uh, like, this was a lawn service advertisement I had to listen to first, but uh, I didn't dial it to see if there was, like, a different uh, advertisement or not. But, yeah, I mean, so there was literally time uh, that you would have to call to get the, you know, that's, you know, now, though, we've got our cell phones and we got our smart watches, so telling time isn't really that difficult for us anymore but really probably what may be harder for for all of us is really truly knowing what time it is not the numerical time but the time in your life is it a time to speak or is it a time to be silent is it a time to take action or is it a time to sit and wait is it a time to grow or is it a time to prepare um, the book of Ecclesiastes uh, you a lot of you guys have know this scripture um, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It says there's a time for everything and that for every season, uh, for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And right now, some of y'all are singing in your head. Exactly right. Exactly. Right? Uh, again, if, if for if if you know if you if you know the song "Turn, Turn, Turn," it's literally just this scripture. Uh, but anyway, a, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak. Are you are you guys getting you, did it like? Oh, uh, I don't. I, the anybody who sung it? 
not the mamas and the papas. It was one of those kind of groups, though. Nah. One the Beatles, one the... Y'all can Google it. Y'all can figure that out on your own. A uh, time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. The birds. The birds. Okay, we'll take... I'll, 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 I'll trust you because I'm not going to look it up right now. Uh, but yeah, so the, the, but the book of Ecclesiastes is, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting book. Um, has anybody ever read through, truly read through the book of Ecclesiastes? Um, it was uh, thought to be written by King Solomon. Um, it's not a fish. I mean, it's, that's, most people believe it was written by King Solomon. It says it was written by the son of David. Um, it doesn't say which one, but we were assuming he was pretty smart, so it was probably him. Um, you know, so, uh, but he wrote things in this book, and, and this, this, this book can be kind of frustrating at times because he would write things like, what good does it do to become rich because when you die, because you'll die and your kids will spend all that you've made. Or he talks about vanity. He says everything is vanity. He uses the word vanity like over 30 times in this book. So clearly that's something that he had an issue with, which I guess if you're like the smartest and the richest guy on the planet, um, I can see how that could become an issue, right? I mean, he told us a lot of problems. He told us a lot of scenarios, but he didn't really give us a lot of solutions. He said there's a time to be silent and a time to speak, but when is that time? When is that time to be silent? When is that time to speak? So, um, you know, overall the book can be kind of confusing, but it really has a pretty good meaning. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool book. Um, you can really think about this book as kind of a transitional book, kind of a transition from the Davidic covenant, which if you talk to um, um, Carrie Andriani, who was here a few weeks ago, if you, if you sat in that, that Old Testament class, you learned that there were different covenants throughout and the, the Davidic covenant and kind of a transition between that and the New Covenant. Um, so it's, it's, the Old Covenant was based on the law, the new covenant being based on grace and love and, and the Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes really teaches us that no matter what we're going through, we're going to probably screw it up. It's essentially what it tells us. Even with the best of intentions, we're probably going to mess it up. Somehow, we see it all the time, even today. If you think about um, ethanol, um, the, you know, gasoline made from corn. It's ethanol. Uh, we think, wow, that's a great way. You know, corn's renewable. It's plentiful. We can grow tons of it. Well, corn is a staple food for a lot of people in developing countries, right? And so what we did was when we started pushing ethanol and creating all these, you know, corn-run vehicles, these flex-fuel vehicles, and using more ethanol, we drove the price of corn up. So now you've got people in other countries that can't really afford to eat. So we thought we were doing something good, but... Somehow we go and we just screw it up because that's just typically what we do. Um, really what the um, teacher in Ecclesiastes is trying to teach us is that no matter how hard we try, we really can't do things on our own. The book literally is setting the stage for the coming Christ. Um, you know, so uh, the book has a lot of practical information in it. Uh, it teaches us that there's you know, a time for everything. Yeah, literally. I mean, it, it kind of covers pretty much everything there. But we kind of have to be careful when we read that. Because a lot of us here, you know, in our culture today, we hear, you know, we, we say, okay, well, there, there's a time for everything. I can literally do everything. There's a time for it. There's going to be a time for me to do everything. But that's not really what it's saying. You know, we have this culture that we live in right now where it encourages us to literally try to do everything. I mean, how many of you guys are like spending time just like running from here to there to here to there and they like, literally don't even have a chance to breathe? That's kind of the culture that we've, we've created in this world is that all gas and no brakes culture. It's like you have to constantly be progressing. If you're not progressing, then you're regressing, you know, and, and so that's not what this book is telling us. The book is telling us that there is time to do the things that you need to do. There is a certain time for everything, but there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only seven days in a week. In those days, you can choose to do certain things, but you literally don't have the talent. You don't have the skills. You don't have the resources or the opportunities to do everything. Um, we live in a culture that tells us that we can, we, you know, we can have it all. Um, we can do it all. 
Um, we just need to manage our time better. How many of you guys have ever re- uh, read a book about time management or gone to a conference about time management? Um, and what probably one of the biggest things that we tend to misunderstand is we really can't manage time. Time, we can't slow time down. We can't speed time up. If we're going through a really great time in our life and we want it to last forever, we can't just slow time down and just stay in that moment. And if we're going through this really terrible time and we want to get through it, you know, we can't speed time up to get through it. But what we can control are our actions and what we do with our time. And, and what we do with our time really determines our priorities. Um, what matters to you? Where do you want to invest your time? You can't do it all. So you have to know what time is so that you can do what's important to you. Um, the problem for many of us is that we've invested so much time into so many places that we've kind of just driven ourselves to a point of distraction. I mean, we don't really dedicate a, a true attention to any one thing, and so we kind of become good at a lot of things. This, I mean, I think this describes me perfectly. I can, I can do a lot of things, but I don't know that I can do a lot of things great. Uh, you know, that's, that's just who I, I mean, I, you know, if you ask me to do, I'll figure out how to do it. It's probably not going to be as good as somebody that really knows how to do it, but I mean, I'll figure it out. But that's, that's kind of where we are as a society. It's like we, we try to do so many different things, but we don't do anything really well. Um, uh, if you notice that in Ecclesiastes, that everything was an opposite, mourn and dance, Scatter stones, gather stones, embrace, refrain from embracing. Everything was an opposite. These are things you can't do at the same time. You physically cannot love and hate at the same time. Um, You cannot have war and peace at the same time. You cannot speak and be silent at the same time. Um, You cannot tear down and build up. These are things that can't be done together. We can't weep and and laugh at the same time. You can laugh until you cry, but let's be honest, you're not weeping in that moment. Um, You're laughing still. I mean, you can't hold on to the past and transition into the future. Um, You know, there's a season for everything that we do. Today, as as we go into the holiday season... You know, fall is, like I said, it's in full swing. It's here. Uh, it's nice and cool out. It's great. Um, winter is right around the corner. Um, so I want to talk to you about seasons and the seasons of our lives and the seasons in our souls. Um, and specifically, I want to talk to you about how to thrive during those seasons that you're in. Um, we've heard a lot of sermons about seasons before. We've seen this scripture in a bunch of sermons before. Um, it's kind of like the standard season uh, scripture, uh, I was actually trying to find something else, and I just, I just kept coming back to this. I was like, God, you're clearly telling me to use this, so that's where we're going to stay. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we've got spring seasons where we work and we sow seeds. Um, in the season, it's a season of anticipation, a season of new things. You're starting new things. Maybe you're in a spring season where you're starting something new. Maybe you just started a new business, or maybe, you know, Maybe you're having, you know, a, a child. Who knows what, whatever the season may be. Um, but a season, a spring season, is a season of something new. Um, you've got to break ground. You have to plant new seeds. You have to water your crops. It's hard work during a spring season. People kind of think the spring is all fun and cheery, but the spring is really hard work. Um, unfortunately, we live in a society where we're told that it should always be spring. Um, we're kind of told that, um, you know, we should always be progressing. We should always be in a season where we're starting something new and doing something new. And truthfully, that, that's really just not true. Um, you know, it's, you know, anybody know what the word is in, in nature for something that just grows constantly and without control? It's cancer. It's a cancer. Right. So literally, if, if you're, If you're listening to the world and it's telling you that if you're not progressing, that you're regressing, then if you're constantly progressing and you're not, you know, you're not taking time to do other things, then it's that's that's a cancer. You know, there there has to be time to not be growing there. And and it's just a cycle of life. You know, summertime comes around the summer season um, again. Now, that's when we're kind of tending to our crops. We're making sure things stay clean. We're kind of refocusing everything, uh, making sure that the, that the seeds we planted in the spring are being developed. 
Um, fall comes around. Fall is the harvest season. Um, this is actually the one season where you get to kind of sit back and reflect and then just enjoy the riches of what you planted and what you cultivated in the summer. And then uh, now you get to sit back and enjoy and, and, and be thankful for the things that, that you've done, that you've received. Um, we get to enjoy fall a little bit. Um, I, I love the fall. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, we get to enjoy the fall. We get to reflect and, re- and, and truly relish in what we've accomplished through God. Um, then, of course, there's the winter season, which is tough for most of us. I guess I should have been. I, I guess you guys know the four seasons, huh? Probably it's okay that those aren't up there. But, um, yeah, winter season is usually a tough season because we're coming out of the fall where everything was great and we just get to, you know, just rake in all the great things that happened to us and, and, and truly reflect on those things. And we don't want that to end. But eventually it has to end because, um, you know, things tend to die in the winter. Things, um, you know, that's what makes it such a hard season. We don't want to let go of those things that are uh, so good in our lives. Um, but you kind of have to because you really can't start something new. God really can't start something new in you unless you let something go. There's always something that has to be let go of before you can take on something new. Kind of goes back to what I was saying a moment ago. There's, you know, there, there's everything is opposite. You know, the, you can't do this and this. You can only do so much. So winter is an important season. Winter is when your roots really start to get strong. That's the, really the time that you're supposed to be digging into the Word and truly grounding yourself to, um, to be able to prepare your soil and prepare your heart for whatever's new, which is coming in the spring. But seasons can be tough. Um, it's, sometimes it's hard to identify which season you're in. Sometimes it's hard because our seasons don't line up with the calendar. Unfortunately, we don't all get to say, all right, it's, it's fall season. We all get to uh, enjoy the, the riches of the previous year. It doesn't work that way. We have um, times of growth. We have times of harvest. We have times of winter. Then we have times of sowing. But that doesn't line up with the actual calendar that, 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 that we have. And what also makes it hard is the people around us aren't in the same seasons we're in. You ever have that person that's in a difficult season and, and you're trying, you know, like you're in the harvest and then they're not, and it's like really hard to be around that person, isn't it? Or when, when, you're, in the, when you're in that winter season and that other person is in their harvest or even in, they're in that spring season where they're just you know, starting something new and it's fresh and fun, and it's, it's, it's hard when you're not in the same season as other people. So, you know, seasons can be difficult. But, um, you know, Paul says in um, Romans chapter 12, not to conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. In other words, um, we have to stop listening to what the world is telling us is appropriate and right and start listening to God because, you know, we're, we're in that mindset of, all right, one season, it's spring, it's spring, I've got to be progressing. If, if I'm not progressing, something's wrong with me. Um, I'm not doing something right if I'm not moving forward. Um, and, and so because that's what everybody keeps telling me, well, you just need to, you just need to get happy or you just need to, to do better or you just need to start something new. But if, if, you're, if you're going that route, if, 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 if you're thinking your season should always be a spring season, you're doing something wrong. God really laid out a roadmap for us when, uh, in the book of creation, or in, in, in the story of creation, in the book of Genesis. Uh, he literally tells us, you know, he worked, and then he rested. He grew, then he appreciated um, what he had done. It wasn't all about creating and doing great things. It was also about self-care. It was also about enjoying the fruits of your accomplishments. It was about rest. You know, it was real work when God created the heavens and the earth. And so he had to rest. So we have to stop being stuck in this rat race that tells us that we're less than if we're not progressing. Um, We have to stop comparing our lives to this fake book world where we literally stage every single photograph and every moment of our lives. You know, it's (laughs) and I don't I don't want to pick on people, um, but I'm going to. Uh, but, uh, you know, you see these photographs, um, uh, we have a friend who just got engaged and it was this authentic moment that there happened to be a photographer sitting right there at the right spot with a bottle of champagne to hand to you so that as you got engaged, they could just document this whole spontaneous moment 
And it's like, anyway, sorry. I, I, uh, that's not even in the notes. I'm not even sure why I'm talking about that. But the point is, that is the lives that people portray. And that's the, li- that's the standard we're living, trying to live up to is this fake standard of what reality is. It's, that's, not, that's not accurate. That's not truth. That's not where we truly are as, as people. Um, Paul says that in order to know what time it is, you have to know what God's will is in your life. Um, That means that in order for you to know what time it is in your life, you have to align yourself with God's will. And some of you are like, well, Andy, I don't know what God's will is for me. And like, I mean, it's it's almost like people, you know, so overthink this thing. It's like they feel like, you know, they're Moses and they have to climb Mount Sinai to get into a place where they can have an an encounter with God. It's really kind of interesting when you stare at lights and when you say that. Um, (laughs) Makes you, woo. But anyway. Uh, you know, people really think that, you know, there should be this aha moment of this is God's will for me. But uh, I think most of us probably know what God's will is for you in this moment. Oh, uh, you know, most of us probably know that there is a person or a relationship that we need to repair. We know that there is a friend that we should reach out to that's hurting. We know that there is um a spouse or a kid that that's that in in our own home that our relationship might be fractured with that we need to fix most of us know these little things and they're sitting right there in front of us but we we don't do them um i bet every one of us has three or four things right now that god is asking you to do um do those things and then he sh- he'll show you the next step it's kind of like the old country preacher that comes to the new church in the city and and for the first three weeks he preaches the same sermon and the deacons all surround him after the the third sermon they're like hey that's a great sermon can you teach us another one can you preach a different one he said i will once you do the things i taught you in the first one you know and that's really where god is right now with with a lot of us you know we've got these things he's told you three things to do but you won't do these three little things so that you can then do what's next you know we we kind of see um you know um, you know, when, with, with Jesus and P, uh, Peter and Andrew, when Jesus called Peter and Andrew, what did he say? Follow me. That's all he said. Follow me. And, and it wasn't follow me and I'm going to make a blind guy see and then we're going to go across the Sea of Galilee and I'm going to calm the waters and then I'm going to die on a tree and then three days later I'm going to rise up and I'm going to come back to you and tell you uh, to go out and, and to um, change the world because they probably would have looked at him and gone... I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'll pass. Um, you know, let, I'm not getting in a boat with that guy. Um, but uh, all they did you know, was follow him. Um, they didn't ask where we were going. They didn't ask how long we're going to be gone. They didn't ask what are we going to be doing. They just simply followed him. And then once they did that, he showed them all of those answers and then some. Um, but the first step is to follow him. The same holds true for us. Uh, when we find ourselves following God's will, um, we find him lighting that path step by step. Um, you know, we've talked about the lamp uh, before where you, in, in those days when you hold a lamp, it would literally just show you the next step on the path. It doesn't show you 30 feet down the road. It shows you the next step that you're going to take, and that's what God does. He's a light into our feet. Um, you know, there's rarely that big moment where God just reveals all of his plans. It's step by step, day by day. You know, gather your manna for the day. Um, gather you the knowledge that you need for that moment. Then allow God to reveal the next step. Um, there's two words that we like to use in our culture when we talk about time. Um, one of those words is efficient. Um, when, when, when we, in our culture, we, we speak of something that's efficient, it's defined as achieving maximum productivity with minimum waste. Yeah, you know, we like to be efficient with our time. We like to buy new toys that make us more efficient. We like to, you know, what can save me time? Um, you know, in my, I paint football fields, you know, I've got a big giant paint machine because it saves me time. It makes me more efficient. The problem is, um, what we end up doing a lot of times is um, we get really, really fast at doing the wrong thing. You know, we're running the wrong race, but we're, we're fast. We're going there quickly, 
but we don't take the time to truly get into the, the right place. The other word is effective. Um, and this word, um, are, you, you know, are you doing things right? Paul talks to the Ephesians about redeeming time. When he talks about redeeming time, you know, basically you have so much time. You're given this amount of time. You're given basically the coin of time. How are you going to spend that? How are you going to redeem that coin? You know, are you going to redeem it to do uh, things that are going to be lasting? Or are you going to use that time doing things that don't matter? Um, you know, how do you invest your time? And the Bible uses a term, uh, kairos, meaning the right moment. What is the right moment to speak or the right moment to be silent? Um, God does things on his time. When everything is ready, God asks, uh, acts. It's that Cairo, kairos moment. When, when, when God is ready, you yeah, know, when it is the right me- moment, then he will act. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, we've got one more scripture I want to share with you before we close. It's in Ephesians chapter 5. Be very careful then how you live, not foolishly, but wisely, knowing how to make the most out of every opportunity. Do not be foolish, but know the will of God. The most important thing you can do is learn how to tell time. What time is it for you? Is it your spring? Are you in a time of sowing and starting something new? Is it your summer? Uh, Are you in a time of growth? That's great if you are. It's still hard work. Uh, Maybe it's your harvest time and it's your time to thank God for everything that he's done for you. Or maybe you're in a time of winter. Maybe um, it's time to let go of something that's old, something that's died, and it's time to let go of that. Um, but you can't start moving forward until you start letting go of the old things. Um, but you're only going to know what time it is, the right, you know, truly know what time it is, if you're in a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, can you tell time? Um, there's a time for everything over under the heavens. Don't live foolishly, but make the most of every moment. Know what the time is for you. Go ahead and bow your heads. Father, thank you so much for the time that you have given us, Lord. Thank you so much for the seasons in our lives, although they don't always seem good. They don't always seem um, pleasant, but they're always necessary. Every single season, no matter what, Lord, that season is, is, is a necessity. Um, whether it is that time of of new beginnings and new growth and new things, or if it's that time of harvest, or if it's that time to let something go. Somebody's holding on to something that they need to let go, Lord, in this room, Lord, and I ask that you you help them do that today, Lord, that they would come down to this altar, that they would speak to you, Lord, and that they would truly let go of something old because we can't move forward as a church. We can't move forward forward. As a community, we can't move forward as your family, Lord, if we're still holding on to the past. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's, it's a loss, well, no matter what it is, God, we ask that you help us to, to let go of the old. Help us to understand that it's okay to be in a winter season. It's okay to be in a time where we're not progressing But at some point, we've got to move from one season to the next, Lord. Maybe we're in a time where we need to step back and rest. Maybe as this holiday season comes and and, and we have family coming to town and and we get into this craziness of Thanksgiving, maybe we can force ourselves on the other side of that, that holiday to sit down and just rest so that we can truly savor the things that you've done for us and truly be thankful for the things that you've done in our lives, Lord. As the uh, worship team begins to, to play and we, and, and we end on this last song, I just invite each and every one of you, if you have anything that you need to lay down at this altar, to come down and put your face on this altar and just give it to God. Uh,